Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to um, show you how to solve quadratic equations by using factoring when a is not equal to 1. So basically, it's going to be very similar to what we have done when a was equal to 1, but there's a little bit of a change here. So um, basically, the first thing that we're going to look at is you know, what to factor and uh, how to factor. And we are going to relate it to a equals 1. And, and if you remember, again, when we're looking at a quadratic equation, any quadratic equation comes in the form of a x squared plus bx plus c. And the values of the a, b, and c are going to be what's really, really important, um, not only for solving uh, quadratics, but um, when solving quadratics when a, when a is not equal to 1. So remember, the first thing we always want to do is make sure our quadratic equation is equal to 0. And you can see in all these cases, I kept it simple for you. I made them all equal to 0. Now, the next thing we're going to do is looking into factor. We're going to, it's going to be very similar to what we did when we were factoring for um, when a was equal to 1. However, instead of trying to identify the values that just multiplied to give us c, negative 15, we're, we need to now determine the values that are going to multiply to a times c. So we have to count that a is not 1 anymore. It's, you know, it's another number. So we have to multiply a times c. So we need to find the two numbers that multiply to give us a times c, and then add to give us b. All right? So again, we look at a times, negative, a times c, which is going to give us a negative 30. And then they have to add to give us b, which is 7. So again, we can think about these in our brain. But if we don't know them off the top of our head, then we can simply go ahead and list out the factors of 30. Now, I'll get to the negative 30 in just a second. For right now, let's just focus on 30. So if I was going to break this up, I'll break this up to all the factors. I have 30 times 1, 15 times 2. Um, and I can also do negative 30, 15 times through. Okay. 10 times 3. I was like, what the heck am I missing? 6 times 5. All right, now remember, if they're negative, that means if, if you're multiplying to give you negative 30, then one of my factors has to be negative. We look at the middle term to determine which factor, the larger or the smaller factor, should be negative. Since they're adding to give us a positive number, then we know that our larger factor is going to have to be positive. So all of the smaller factors are going to be negative. So these will all give us negative 30 when we multiply them. Now I just need to figure out which one of these is going to multiply to give us, or add, to give us a positive 7. You can see my answer is going to be 10 comma negative 3. Now, here's the common mistake students will make. They will quickly go and factor this as x plus 10 times x minus 3 equals 0. right? Because that's what we did when a was equal 1 to kind of jumpstart things. But the problem with using this is this, fact, this is not that factored. And you can always check your answer, remember, by applying FOIL. x times x gives you x squared, not 2x squared. 10 times negative 3 gives you negative 30, not negative 15. So this is not the right factored form. So then how do we find the right factored form? Well, the best thing to do is to think about you know, what exactly, again, is factoring and what exactly does it represent or mean. So remember, to understand that, it's the best thing to do is to think about, um, best thing to do is think about multiplication. What exactly is multiplication? Multiplication is the, the product provides us with an area. If I said, you know, what is 2 times 3? Well, we know that answer is 6. And 6 not only represents the product, but it represents the area of the product of 2 pi, 2 pi 3 if we were going to look at that as like a box. So if I'm giving you a value and I want to factor it, basically what we're looking for is the length and the width that, provide, that multiply to give us that area. So we're going to use that thinking and saying, all right, here is basically my area. I need to find the lengths and the widths. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a box. Now, on that box, what we're simply going to do is we're going to plug in our area. Now, we have an issue here because I have four boxes, and I only have three terms. So to get around that, what helped me out by doing all of this is I created two terms that add up to give me 7, right? 10 minus 3 gives me 7. So I can replace these. I can replace my middle term 7 with 10x and negative 3x. Because would you agree 10x plus negative 3x gives you 7x? So by doing this factoring first, we, found we replaced the middle term 7, so we have two terms to fill in the boxes. Now, all we simply need to do is take the area of each little box and find out which values we um, are going to create the area. Or we need to multiply to get that area. Now, a lot of times, students just arbitrarily just go, OK, hey, let's just throw numbers out there. So they say, all right, let's do 2x and let's do x, because 2x times x gives you 2x squared. The problem comes in, we got, which we got to be careful about, is 2x times what gives you negative 3x? 
Well, there's a number, but it's a fraction. And we don't really want to deal with fractions, right? So we always want to think, because remember, whatever the height is of this box is also going to be the height of that box. Whatever the width is of this box is also going to be the width of that box. So we've got to be systematic about where we're choosing and make sure whatever height and width is going to work for all the boxes in the rows or the columns. So the best would be to rewrite it like this, because x times 2x still gives you 2x squared. x times what gives you negative 3x? That's negative 3. 2x times what gives you 10x? That's going to be a positive 5. Now, these are my two side lengths. These are what multiply to give me this, which is the same as that. So now I can say x plus 5 times 2x minus 3 equals 0. Now I can apply the zero product property to say x plus 5 equals 0 and 2x minus 3 equals 0. I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to write the solution as x equals negative 5 and x equals a positive 3 halves. So the solution set is going to be negative 5 and positive 3 halves. Okay. Now you might say, all right, you know, that's kind of confusing. I really don't like the box. It doesn't make sense. I have another way for you. So let's go ahead and get to the next one. All right, so for the next problem, you can see, again, is everything is set up. So we're going to do the same stuff. All right, basically, we need to identify our a and our c, which is 6 times 20. So I'll do 6 times 20, which is um, 6 times 20, which will be 120. That's your a times c. And then we need to figure out the values that are going to add to give us a positive 23. So again, if you, don't, if you think of the factors in your head and you can't think of what multiplies to give me um, 23, then we, list, then we just start listing out our factors. So we do 120 times 1. Um, we can do uh, 60 times 2. We can do 40 times 3. We can do 30 times 4. We can do 20 times uh, 20 times 6. We can do 15 times 8. And let's see, we could do 12 times 10. So there's a lot of them, right? But remember, they have to, out of all of these, they all multiply to give me 120, but only one of them adds up to give me a positive 23. Because it could be positive or negatives for the factors that give you 120. But since they're adding to give you a positive 23, all the factors have to be positive. Well, the only case that works here is 15 and 8. Now, if you don't like the box method, please at least understand that we can rewrite 15 and 8 replaces my middle term. So what I can do is I can use another factoring technique. And basically what I'm going to do is kind of the same thing as the last one, but it's going to look different. I'm basically going to rewrite 23 as a positive 15x plus 8x and then plus 20 equals 0. So all I'm doing is I'm, you know, I'm changing what the, the, how the equation looks, but I'm not changing its value in any form. All I'm doing is I'm, I'm breaking apart 23 into 15x and 8x. Now why? Couldn't you do 20 and 3? Yes, of course. But 15 and 8 are the only two numbers that multiply to give you 120 and add to give you 23, which is a part of our equation. So, so now what it does, because now we took a trinomial and we made it into a polynomial with four terms. So what do we do now? Now we factor by grouping. So we group the first two terms, and we group the last two terms. Now when grouping, when you, after you've grouped them, now you factor out the GCF, the common factor, of each expression. So I look at this, I say, all right, what is the GCF? What did, does 6x squared plus 15x have in common? Well, they both share an x, and they both share a 3. So if I factor out a 3x, I will be left with a 2x plus 5. And then over here, if I factor out, let's see, I can factor out an 8x and 20. I can factor out a 4. So if I factor out a 4, I will be left with a 2x plus 5 equals 0. Now what you can see is I use the color code. You can see the black is exact. Oops, that's a positive. Sorry. Let's see if I can write that here. Plus 4. That's a positive 4 I factored out, right? So it's a plus. So now you can see I have this expression plus this expression. So now we need to factor again. And you can see that the, in the black, the 2x plus 5 is what both of these share. They both have in common a 2x plus 5. So I can factor that out. So by factoring out a 2x plus 5 out of both of those expressions, I am left with a 3x plus 4. 
Maybe I should use blue so I don't confuse you. A 3x plus 4 equals 0. Now I have a product of two binomials equal to 0. And you can always go back and check your answer. 2x times 3x equals 6x squared. 5 times 4 equals 20. And then double check the middle terms. 2x times 4 is 8x. 3x times 5 is 15x. Those add to give you 23x. So it works. So now we just set them both equal to 0 using our 0 product property. And then we go ahead and solve. So we can say x equals a negative 5 halves and x equals a negative 3 fourths. And we can write that as a solution set of negative 5 halves comma negative 3 fourths. Okay. Now you can see, guys, this kind of took me a little bit longer to do this. And obviously, you know, we, we teach these methods so that there's something you can fall back on if you can't basically kind of figure it out. But you know, the whole goal of this, and especially once you do a lot of problems, is just start doing these problems in your head. So that's what I'm going to do for this next one. And um, a lot of times, these when these next one is when your a is really not that doesn't have a lot of factors. So in this case, you can see that um, you can see that each time I when I broke this down, right? You can see that. Remember, these two terms have to give me 6x. So my first two factors, when I'm factoring this, if I was going to factor this in my head, I know that the first two terms have to multiply and give me 2x squared, right? x times 2x gives you 2x squared. 2x times 3x gives you 6x squared. So I know that my two factors have to give me 2x squared. Well, the only two values that are going to give me 2x squared are 2x and x. Now, the other two terms have to multiply to give me a negative 15. Well, there's a little bit more options with that, right? You could do negative 15 times 1. You could do 1 or negative 1 times 15. You could do negative 5 times 3, uh, 3 time, or negative 3 times 5. So there's a little bit more options with that. Now, you can try each and every one of those options if you like. But I also want you to think a little bit systematically here. Um, when, you're, when you're looking into that, think about what you're going to be multiplying. We know the values that are going to multiply. And let's actually write that out. Let's do 15. So we have negative 15. So we could do 15 times negative 1, negative 15 times 1, 5 times negative 3, and negative 5 times positive 3. Okay, Those are all the factors that are going to give us negative 15. That's what's going to fill in this second spot. Now, again, remember though, the middle terms, my inner and my outer terms, have to add to 7x. So if you think about this, if I put a positive 15 and a negative 1 here, when I multiply my outer terms, that's going to be 2x times 15, which is 30, right? And then I'm going to subtract, and then I'm going to add a negative x. Well, that's going to give me 29. So that's not going to be close at all, right? And so even if I do the negative or the, even if I make that positive, that negatives, 15 and 1 is not going to work in this way. So what about even if I switch them? 15 and 1. Well, again, 2 times 1 gives you 2, but then x and times negative 15, that's going to be nowhere near 7. So the 15s and the negative uh, 15 and 1 is not going to work. So now let's go ahead and look at now let's go and look at 5 and negative 3. And what I notice here is again, again, I want the larger number to be positive. So uh, let us try 2x times a positive 5, because that's going to give me the largest result times a negative 3. And what you see here is 2x times x gives you 2x squared. Negative 3 times 5 gives you negative 15. And then when you multiply your middle terms and your outer terms, you get negative 3x and positive 10x, which adds to give you a positive 7x. So there you go. We did it in our head. So now you have 2x minus 3 equals 0 and x plus 5 equals 0. So therefore, x equals 3 halves and x equals negative 5. Solution set, 3 halves comma negative 5. OK, in this last example, um, I figured I would want to do one because you know, a lot of students will look at this and they'll go at it. They'll start doing negative 30 times 12 and see what happens. But you know, when you're factoring, why do something that's more difficult than it has to be? The best thing I want you to look at is, is always looked in. I didn't say it for the other ones, but you should always, whenever you're looking into factoring, always see if you can factor out a GCF. Always look if there's a common term. And you'll see between all of these coefficients, they're all divisible by 3. So you can factor out a, um, and I'm actually going to factor out a negative 3, because I don't like negatives. So when I factor out a negative 3, I'm left with a positive 10x squared plus 3x plus 4 equals 0. Then I can just divide out that negative 3. It's not going to affect my answer. So I'm left with 10x 
squared plus 3x. Oops, that's going to be minus. Wait a minute, if I factor that out, that's negative as well. I forgot to change those answers. So that becomes negative 3x minus 4 equals 0. Now I can go ahead and factor this. Now you could use this method, you could use this method, or you could use that method. Since I'm kinda, I don't want to make this video that long, I'm going to go through, um, I'm going to do it in my head. So um, I'll kind of talk my way through it. And, but basically, you want to say, well, what are all the possibilities we could do for 10x? Well, I could have one binomial as 10x times x. I could also do 5x times 2x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some addition and subtraction in my head. And I'm going to pick values that are going to multiply to give me 12. Now, since they have to add to give me positive 9, I know that all the factors are going to be positive. So let's pick out all the numbers that give you 12. So we have 12 times 1. Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. Ah, what am I doing? We really need to pick the numbers that are given 4. I looked at the wrong equation. We want to pick the factors that are going to give us negative 4. So we could have 4 times negative 1, negative 4 times positive 1, and we could do 2 times negative 2. So I'm going to look for values that are going to, multi when I multiply them, are going to add up to give me negative 3. Now, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that 10 is not going to, 10 and the 1 are not really going to give me close. I mean, I could do you know, plus 1x and then minus, um, minus 4. That's going to give me 40 and, and x. That's not going to be right. Um, even if I, oops, I'm mean, sorry, plus 1 and minus 4. That's not really going to work. 10 times 4, negative 4 is negative 40. Even if I switch them around, 4 and 1. The difference between 10 times 1 and 4 times, and, or 10x times negative 1 and 4x, 4 times x is negative 6. So that's still the difference is too far. And even if I did 2s, I, I have to multiply 10 by one of the 2s, which is going to give me 20, which will be too much of a spread. So I'm not going to worry about the first one. Let's go ahead and focus on the next one, 5x and 2x. So again, we can look at, I'm not going to really want to multiply the 5 times the 4, because that will give me too high of a number. So let's look at maybe the 4 being here, and then minus 1. So if I did 5x um, times negative 1 would give me negative 5x, and then negative 5x, ooh, that's close, and then this gives me positive 8x. Well, 8x minus 5x is positive 3x, but I need this to be negative. So all I need to do is swap the signs. 5x times 1 is 5x. 2x times negative 4 is negative 8x. Negative 8x plus 5x is negative 3x. 5x times 2x is 10x. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Done. Apply the zero product property. 5x minus 4 equals 0. 2x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, I have x equals 4 fifths. And x equals negative 1 half. Therefore, my solution set is 4 fifths comma negative 1 half. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a quadratic by factoring when a is not equal to 1. Thanks.